Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, we are starting phase two of getting the mini split air conditioning system into Goliath. Yes, this is all kind of part of the off-grid system as well. I wanted something that I can use for short periods of time off of the battery bank if need be, maybe just like some overnights and parking lots and so on and so forth in the summer. But it's been a big project, nothing super complicated, but uh, just time consuming because of having to reconfigure the way the bedroom was set up to fit the inside unit. And as you saw in the last video, all that went relatively smooth, just time consuming. So today we're gonna mount the rooftop unit. And before I do, I've got to get rid of the unit that I've already got in here on the roof. All right guys, so I started pulling down the inside unit already. So this is kind of like an all-in-one package type unit, typical for an RV. Um, I don't think this is the original one. If you look over there in the wall, there is a thermostat unit, but yet this unit has got the thermostat built into it. And that wall unit has never controlled this in the time that I have owned Goliath. But anyway, we're gonna get this ripped out and then there's gonna be a big hole in the roof. We gotta come up with a solution for that. All right, so with the interior unit out of the way, you can kind of see what's up around here. This right here is actually the frame, the structure of Goliath's roof. Here we have the 120 volt, uh, 15 amp uh, power source here to power the unit. And then these wires here, I believe, are what came from that thermostat that we're no longer gonna use and they haven't been used in the time I've had it anyways. But these wires is what we're gonna still use to power the new rooftop unit once we get it all installed. Just for clarification, I keep referring to it as a rooftop unit and that is solely because I am going to be mounting it to the rooftop. With the mini split system, it's not technically a rooftop system. You can mount this on a wall. Some RVers have mounted on the back bumper of their RV. Goliath doesn't really have a back bumper. And I didn't want to add to that length back there as well because we're already 48 feet long. I didn't want to make it 49 or 50. So also because we're in the back of Goliath all the time with the doors, I just thought it'd be inconvenient to be there. It would have to be up above the door still, which would make it hard to access to work on. Not that the roof won't be, but I've got room on the roof. I was very particular about the unit I got. It should fit and not put us in an overheight situation. And we should be good and it'll get good airflow up there. And, uh, and it should perform very well up there. The wiring's already there. All in all, it just made it for what was the simplest installation. Hi guys, so with that interior piece out of the way, there are four screws, one in each corner, that actually hold this bottom plate to the top unit, as you can see there. This wiring is attached to the top unit. This wiring comes through the frame of Goliath. So we gotta take out those four screws. This support bracket will come out, and at that point, the rooftop AC fixture will be loose and we can go up top and just pick it up and take it off. Now guys, that's really all there is to taking one of these rooftop AC units out. You know, for those of you who've never done it before, it's not hard. It's just a couple screws to get the trim piece off, a couple bolts to separate the two units. I've had this unit off before because if you look, there's some fresh sealing up there. When we got Goliath, there was a little bit of a leak here. So I took it all off, put a new seal on and put it back on. But I've had quite a few RVs at this point now. And uh, I've had more than one AC unit off. So this is actually relatively simple. But for the new guy, it's not challenging, not hard at all. All right, so as long as my sealant isn't holding it down, we should just have to push up on this and pick it up. And I could be wrong. Well guys, I made that sound a little easier than it was. Turns out my seal around here was pretty stout. I had to take a putty knife and I went in here to cut the seal all the way, but now you can see it's off. But yeah, had a lot of sealant up there. So now we go up on the roof, pull the rest of the way off. All right guys, this is the unit right here that we were removing right in between these two solar panels. So at this point we should just be able to pick it up and pull it off of here. There we go. You see the debris that sits underneath it? Yucky. So I gotta get this done off of the roof and then we can worry about filling this hole.
All right, so the camera angle on that wasn't the best, but that was the easiest way to get it down rather than try to carry it down the ladder. I have no intention of using that. It made a horrible roaring noise. I wouldn't even give it away to anybody. Yes, it did cool, but it wasn't worth anything. So, and I doubt I heard it any more than what it was already heard. I guess so. <laughs> All right, guys, I got the area cleaned up with the seal off of it. So what I'm planning on doing is using this piece of aluminum that I just had laying around the shop. It's actually a pretty nice piece that I had fabricated for a display cabinet a long time ago. Now, we have discontinued the use of the display cabinets that uh, I made these for back in the day. So just kind of kept the metal around in case it ever came in handy. And well, there's one of those times it's going to come in handy. This is a lot bigger than what I need up here but I'm gonna cut it down to fit the hole about two inches extra on all four sides. Put a whole bunch of uh, the 3M 5200 roof sealant, or well, it's a marine sealant, but we're gonna put it on the roof here and then bolt it all down. And then when that's dried and cured, we'll come back and top coat it with that self-leveling stuff, just like we did back there on the trailer back in the days. What I like about this is it's only an eighth inch thick and it's plenty strong enough that because the hole here is small enough that even if I step on this, I'm not gonna fall through. And this is honestly probably the simplest, easiest way to do this. Yeah, I could cut a square big enough to just fit in the hole, but then the problem is I don't have the rubber to go over it and we still got other sealing issues. At least this will overlap the entire thing and we should get every bit as good of a seal as we did when the AC unit was on here or where like the rooftop fans come through, so on and so forth. They have that flange that goes over top of the roof. But also the reason I wanted something that was very thin is because we have to get that outside unit up here on the roof. And I don't know exactly the footprint it's gonna take yet. I know it's gonna fit in this area, but I don't know exactly where the feet are gonna land. And I didn't wanna have like a big three quarter inch lip up here because then it's gonna make that one a sit crooked. This eighth of an inch I can compensate for pretty well. All right guys, so I took all my measurements and I've laid everything out here on the piece of aluminum. And what I've decided to do is make it 16 inches by 16 inches. That will give me one inch perimeter around the hole that'll give me room to drill my holes, get a good seal. A one inch of seal is more than enough seal. Keep in mind, that'll only be the first stage of sealing. The second stage will go on top of that. So I've uh, got everything marked out. Can break out the little trusty battery power circular saw and we're gonna cut this. All right, guys, gonna double check our measurements. And we have 16, 16, 16, and 16. All right, now I've taken my uh, level here, which I've just really been using as a straight edge, and it is one inch thick on the bottom. So I've laid it down and I've drawn in a one inch margin. I don't know if you can see it very well. We say scratched in a one inch margin and uh, that is the area that we shall be using for the actual ceiling surface. So that's where we're going to drill our holes for the mounting bolts. And I'm probably going to use about six on each side. So one in each corner and then four in between the fields of those corners. All right, guys, and what we're going to be using to fasten this plate to the roof are going to be these 14 by three quarter kind of uh, sheet metal like pan type screws. Um, no, probably not the best thing to put into wood, but I've used this in a lot of other stuff and it works just fine. All of the wood screws I have are just too long and I don't want to go through the roof to the interior. So these are three quarters of an inch. We've got three quarter inch plywood up there. Plus we got the eighth of an inch for the plate that should keep us safe from puncturing through anything below the surface of the roof. So I've gone through and I've laid out where I'm going to drill all my holes. So we're going to pre-drill this and then we're going to run over it with a sander to smooth out before we take it up there. That way, once we get up there, all we have to do is seal it 
and screw it. All right, guys, all the holes are drilled. It's deburred, even kind of rounded my corners and whatnot on it. No, it's not the prettiest thing. I'm not trying to produce something super fancy. This is temporary. Remember, we are going to redo the roof on Goliath. And when that's done, that hole won't even be there anymore. So this plate will be obsolete. This is simply temporary. I ended up putting the holes, three on each side, one in the corners. That puts them at about three and a half inches on center. And I think that works out pretty well for what this is. It's not a structural piece. It's just there to stop water from coming through. And hopefully if I step on it, I won't fall through. All right, guys. So we are back up on the roof. We got our plate. What I did is I cleaned the plate with a... Uh, with some good cleaner to make sure there's no greases or oils or anything like that so we get good adhesion. I've got our 3M 5200 marine sealant and we've got our screws, we've got the screw gun. It's time to put this down. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put a bead around the innermost edge of the hole. That way, if anything gets past our screws, there's gonna be that one last little bit of line of defense. I'm also gonna put a bead on the outside edge of the plate that we're putting on which hopefully will stop water from getting under the plate at all. And then of course, all the screws will get sealed as well. So there'll, there'll be a couple different lines of defense in there. And of course, once it's all mashed together, it should kind of flow in pretty good. Um, but that way, if anything gets past our screws or anything gets past the edge, there'll be that second bead on the inside that hopefully will stop it from getting past the rubber part of the roof and into our opening. All right, guys, as you can see, I got that fresh bead laid around the innermost part of the opening. Then over here, I've got that fresh bead running around the outside edge. Plus I have filled every bolt hole so that once I flip this over and lay it down, we can screw it in place. All right, there she is. And you can see where every bolt hole, there's a bit of goop squeezing out through the hole. So we're gonna go ahead and run our screws in. All right, guys, there we go. All the screws are in. We got a good amount of squish out at all four sides everywhere, so I'm pretty confident that we've got a good seal in there. And it's pretty sturdy to stand on. Now I've actually still got to drill one more hole in that plate, but I'm not ready to do it yet. Once I get the AC unit up here and I decide where it's gonna sit, um, I can decide where I'm gonna bring the power through from the inside and I'll put another waterproof box up here, just kinda like I did with a combiner box over here. And then that way there'll always be the power source up here and then I will do a whip out to the AC unit. But I don't know exactly where that's gonna sit up here just yet. So I don't wanna drill a hole and put the box in and find out it's in the way for me to mount the condenser unit. All right guys, and here's how we look on the inside. You can see that that sealant has squeezed very well into all the corners, almost too well because I've got some that dripped in here on the floor. So gotta be careful not to step in it and try to get this cleaned up. All right guys, there you go, floor's all cleaned up. A little bit of a break cleaning, some shop rags, problem solved. Now up here, obviously there's no R value to the insulation anymore. So we are gonna have to find something to put up here to insulate. Otherwise that plate is gonna get really hot with the sun shining on it. You know, getting the old unit down was pretty easy by myself. Getting the new unit up there, it's about every bit as heavy. I'm not so sure I can do it by myself. I probably could. I just don't know that I should. So uh, I'm gonna take a break and let that sealant set up and uh, maybe I can see if I can get one of the boys to come out here after work and help me hoist it up there. Be easier with two people, I think. And also gives that stuff time to set up so I don't step in it and track all over it. All right, guys. I called for reinforcements and Talon and Derek showed up to try to help me get this unit up on the roof. All right, so Talon decided to just show off and just, you know, take it all up by himself and not let us help him. There you go. How are you doing? There we go. How, what? How we, oh, the straps, you know, if you held the bottom. <laughs> you held it from the bottom, Talon.
All right, guys. Well, thank you to Derek and Talon for coming up and helping me with that. Uh, we got the unit up here. We got it unboxed. We got it pretty much set in place. However, I'm going to wait till tomorrow to do the wiring and do the final hookup on the piping just because that sealant is still really, really wet. I want to give it some more cure time. It's it's pretty close to the box, and I know that I'm going to screw up somehow and put my hand in it or my foot in it, and I just don't want to do that. So anyway, I think that's where she's going to sit. As you can see, that's where the old unit was. So we are fairly close over here. This is where the tubing is going to come in, the electrical up here, and I will route it down through that little gap once it's mounted to there. And then we'll be able to call this complete, but that's going to have to wait till tomorrow, I think. You can see the sun is, it's getting low in the sky, so we don't have a whole lot of light left. I mean, probably another hour, hour and a half until it's dark. But um, really, really it's about letting that sealant cure. So we're going to pick this up tomorrow morning. All right, guys, we are back up at Goliath. Uh, it's the next morning, and well, it's actually afternoon by now. I uh, handled some business this morning. As you see, I went out to uh, Lowe's and I picked up a few pieces of hardware. I had to get the screws to mount it to the roof. I also needed to get the waterproof combiner box, so on and so forth. So now we're ready to go up there. Hopefully that sealant is set up enough that we're not gonna disturb it too badly, and we can get that uh, condenser unit permanently mounted, and then get the plumbing connected and get the wiring done and then it's just a matter of starting it up, which I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. Okay, so I've got a handful of tools and parts and sealant. Everything that I think I'm going to need, I know not everything. But the stuff that I know for sure I'm going to need, I, I'm going to have to make a couple trips up and down most likely. But we're going to head up on the roof and see if we can't get this project tidied up. All right, so we're back up on the roof of Goliath, and as you can see, man, it's an absolutely gorgeous day this morning. Now, earlier this morning, it was actually pretty chilly. I, I, knew, I debated on putting pants and a long sleeve on because it was only like 35 degrees or so, but now it's mid-60s. The sun is shining, almost no clouds at all in the sky. Absolutely beautiful fall weather. Now, unfortunately, the sealant has not 100% cured. It's still a little bit of sticky and tacky but we can't wait too much longer we've got to move on so we're just going to be super careful so as of right now i've got the ac unit where i want it so this is where we're going to leave the condenser i've taken a paint marker and i have marked where all of the holes are going to be now i'm going to remove the condenser from out of the way and i will make mounting points and i'll show you what i'm going to do i'm going to use studs here instead of bolting it down just because i think it'd be easier to seal it and especially if i have to move it again all right, so I've got the condenser moved out of the way. And you know, it came with these little rubber isolators to go under the feet, at least I assume so. But at no part in the directions do they tell you exactly how to put them. Now, the slot is kind of oval. And if you look, the slot in the, slot in the feet is kind of oval. However, they don't really like line up good on the feet when you line up that oval hole. You see there are ridges on the top side, and then there's ridges on the bottom side going the opposite direction. They're nice and squishy, and this is really just so that the vibration of this thing running doesn't vibrate the roof and you hear it inside. Um, so I am gonna put these under the feet, um, but I also got some rubber grommets as well that we're gonna put around the bolts where they go through the holes in the feet of the condenser unit. That way uh, it should help isolate from noise transferring through the bolt. All right guys, so rather than bolting this unit down to the roof, keep in mind this is a three quarter inch wood roof with a rubber liner over top of it. I'm gonna use studs. So it's got the wood side right here that will thread into the wood. And then the other side is a, uh, a 5 16 by 18 uh, stud, which will work out well. So one of the reasons I've done this is if you look at the feet on here, the feet on the back side have plenty of clearance, but if you look here on this side, that foot is actually kind of underneath this cage and trying to get in there straight with a screw gun or anything would be challenging. 
and I uh, just didn't want to take a chance of messing it up. This one here is kind of close to the edge as well. But if you go around to the other side, you can see that the feet stick out way past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill the holes. That's why I marked them all out with uh, the paint marker. And I'm just going to use this uh, 3 8 lag bolt. I'm sorry, 5 16 lag bolt. And I'm going to screw it in first with the screw gun. That'll give me my hole. It'll give me my threads. That way, when I go to put this in, because you see there's no hex nut head on this or anything. So I'm going to use the uh, vice grips and I will thread it in. That'll just make threading it in with the vice grips easier since, you know, we don't want it to slip or grip or anything like that. Hi right, guys, and once those studs are in place, I've got these rubber grommets here that are gonna go through the top of the foot, and you see there's a little shoulder on it. That shoulder will go through the opening in the foot. So our opening in the foot is about half an inch. The studs we're using are 5 16 so That rubber will take up the difference and make sure that the metal never actually touches the bolt when the unit is running. Now I had a hard time finding four of the same exact ones, so I've got three different styles. All they're gonna do the same job, they will all work. So we're gonna mix match it a little bit, but it's all gonna do the same thing. All the while, these feet will still be underneath, so the whole unit will be sitting on these. So in theory, none of this unit at all will be connected to the roof without being isolated by a rubber first. That should keep it nice and quiet up here. All right guys, so I've drilled all the holes and then I filled them with the sealant. Now what I do, like I said, I actually take the tip of the sealant. The 5200 is in more of a caulking tube and uh, I actually take the tip of it and I stick it down in the hole and I squeeze it. That way it fills the hole with sealant. It coats all of that raw wood in there that we just drilled into with sealant. And then I leave a little dollop on top. That way when the stud goes in and our uh, our foot goes down, there's, there's enough there to squish out and create a really, really good seal. So now it's time to thread in the studs. Alright guys, and as you can see, because we pre-drilled and pre-threaded that, it actually made it go in nice and easy. No struggle whatsoever. All four studs are in place and the rubber pads are down over the studs. So now it's time to pick this unit back up, set it in place. But before we do that, we could hook the drain line to the bottom. So the unit came with this flexible drain line. You see there's a little fitting there that is designed to click into the bottom of this condenser unit. My solar panels sit a little ways off the ground. We've got, uh, you know, cabling running underneath them anyways. So from where this sits, I'm gonna try to run it under the solar panel and straight off the edge of the roof. We'll secure it over there, leave it hanging off a little bit so that the water from the condensation doesn't run down the side of Goliath. It will run off of it. Typically when we are set up, we are pitched just slightly to the driver's side. So I'm gonna run it off the driver's side. That way it's more downhill than going the other way. So there's the drain line running underneath the solar panel back out the other side and uh well let me get where you can see it there was plenty of drain line it's all the way down on the ground all right so now we're going to pick this unit up we're going to set it in place Lean it over, hook up that drain line, which is just a quick connect. You just got to put it in, twist it 90 degrees, but there's not enough room underneath the unit to do that once it's in place. So I'm going to get it set in its approximate place, hook that up, and then set it down on the studs. Houston, we have a problem. Now that I've got the drain line hooked to the bottom of it, it sticks down further than the feet do, which doesn't make any sense. So maybe I'm supposed to get a different set of feet to go underneath this, which was never mentioned in the kit, never mentioned in the instructions, but like I said, the instructions weren't that clear on how to mount it. Um, so I gotta come up with something. I gotta space it just enough and I'm gonna have to back those studs up a little bit to get the proper clearance. Well, everybody, I just love repurposing stuff. I like taking things that ordinarily might be garbage and still being able to use them. And right now, I think love jugs may have come to the rescue. So, in a lot of love jug applications, we have these little medallions that come with the kits and they look like this. They're made of stainless steel. They have the love jugs logo on them and they are about three millimeters thick, which is pretty close to an eighth of an inch. 
So what I've done here is thinking maybe a quarter of an inch of height might be all that I need. So I've stacked two of these on top of each one of those studs. And yeah, because the OEM Harley Davidson horn bracket is a 5 16 stud, which is what I'm using, they fit absolutely perfect. Now, whether they fit under the feet of the condenser unit or not is yet to be seen. But so I've got two on each stud down here. Hopefully that will give me the distance I need. We're going to test it now and see. All right, guys, I've been monkeying around with it for the better part of half an hour now. Two of those love joke spacers weren't enough. I went up to five on each and it still wasn't quite enough. And actually I had five on three, four on one because I was one spacer short. Um, but I found something that was an equal distance and it still wasn't quite enough. So I found some thicker nylon washers. They were, well, spacers, I should say. They were about three eighths of an inch thick. Um, so I took a couple of the other ones out, put those in. And man, I've got it to where there's no pressure on the line, but the line is still touching the roof, which I don't like. I want to at least have a, I'd at least like to have three or four millimeters of clearance there, just so that even with vibration, it doesn't wear into that rubber. But nothing I do, I'm happy with. I've exhausted all of my options with the parts that I have here. So it looks like I'm going to close up shop, jump in the truck, head into town, and see if I can't find a better foot mounting option for this. Sucks, but I want to do it right. So what really sucks about this is calculations. So when I purchased this unit, I had calculated what the manufacturer specified that the overall height of the unit was, because I gotta make sure that I'm not over height on the roof up there. Yeah, the roof does drop down on Goliath, but I'm still limited to how tall I can go, obviously. And the manufacturing specs say that it was, well, 22 inches. And I knew that I was comfortable at 21. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can fudge that extra inch out of there. That's not a problem. And uh, when we got the unit up there the other night, you know, we put out some straight edges and you know, we did some measurements. And even though the unit measured 22 high, we were still within that legal limit. Well, if I've got to put feet under there that raise it another two inches or possibly even three, now I'm worried about being over that 13 foot six. And for those of you that aren't in the trucking industry or understand stuff like that, legally, any motor vehicle on the road cannot be taller than 13 six without pulling permits and pulling permits. That's so you don't hit bridges and low hanging branches and stuff like that. I think we're still going to be okay, but we're going to be pushing that limit. You know, we're sitting right next to a semi truck and or semi trailer and Goliath sits just a little bit lower than the trailer and my really really only big concern is going to ocean city next year we do have to go through those bridge tunnels and they're very strict on that 13 six foot limit and if you guys saw in the other video there's not a lot of clearance between the top of the trucks and the ceiling of that tunnel so if i'm off or i'm wrong it could be disastrous now goliath does sit kind of at an angle going down the road because the rear sits higher than the front does so realistically, we, we should still be safe. We should be. We measured it yesterday. We were only at like 13.1. So I should have about four inches to play with and still be legal, still be able to get through the tunnels. But it is still a little bit concerning. You know, I planned this, you know, and of course, you know, the best laid plans don't always work. I planned this very, very calculating, but I'm so disappointed in Cooper Hunter that this isn't calculated into their overall height. Uh, one, why did it not come with the proper feet for it to sit on? And it should have included those feet in that height measurement. Even if it didn't include them, it should have told you what feet to use in order to clear that line because that line is part of their assembly. So that line actually changes the height of that unit. Even if you didn't put feet on it, if you just let that line sit on the ground, it's gonna bump that unit up another half an inch or so. So these are all things that really, really should have been taken into consideration by the manufacturer so that I could have planned a little bit better given the proper information. Well guys, I think I've got a solution. So I walked around Lowe's trying to find feet for an air conditioning unit or even feet for an air compressor. They had nothing, but what I did find was rubber stoppers. So see, they got a slight taper it actually works well because the small end fits right up in the bottom of that recess where the feet go. Um, they're a little bit harder of a rubber than I would have liked to have, 
but I'm still gonna put them on top of those pads that are already there. The two combined give me just enough clearance. I just went up on the roof and I mocked it up. So I set everything there, I set the thing in place, and it gave me about an eighth of an inch of clearance on that drain tube. So as long as I don't compress these down too much, we should be good. Whole idea of this is we don't want to compress it too much anyways. We just want to snug it to keep it from falling off the roof. So I've got to put five sixteenths holes in the middle of all four of these. And then I should be able to go up there and do the final assembly. I also did have to buy longer studs because I was using two inch. And it turns out I need three inch to make it through a thicker dampener. So replace those already. They're already sealed in. The little rubber bases are already up there. Drill these, we should go back together easily. I hope, I really hope. All right guys, because rubber stretches a little bit when you drill it, I actually drilled the holes out to be 21 64th. And then as you see, I worked it back and forth there a little bit just to clean the hole up. I got, I got one of them slightly off center, but it's still gonna do its job. Uh, the main reason for that is because, you know, it stretches when you drill it. Then when you take the drill out, it kind of closes back up again. And as you can see, it made it a nice snug fit on the 5 16 bolt. So I had to use a little bit of force to get it in there, but not a lot. And that's exactly how we want it. So let's go back on the roof, let's put this thing together. All right, guys, so this is what our mounts look like now. And it should all work just fine. It worked. All four bolted down. Didn't tighten them a lot, just enough to get the the stud to come through the nut on all four. And you'll see that there's still a little bit of wiggle to it, but it's rubber mounted. That's exactly what we wanted. That's what's gonna stop that vibration. So as long as we're not over height, you can see how much it sticks up above the other items. But it's not sticking up taller than that semi truck just yet. Now, I don't know that that semi-truck is actually sitting level. It looks like it might be a little bit nose up, but um, we should be okay. I really think we should be okay. What, what I'll do over the next couple days is I'll get Goliath out on some level ground. Um, I'll air all the suspension up, get it to ride height, and I'll put a straight edge across this coming out over the ground, and we will measure it at that point to the bottom edge of the straight edge, and we'll get an actual overall height on it but it does stick up higher than anything else on the roof. So as long as that clears, we'll know everything else is good. Unfortunately, all this on and off, sealant all over my hands, I've got fingerprints all over the unit. Black 3M 5200 fingerprints. Luckily, if I get it before it cures with some uh, brake clean, hopefully it'll all wipe off in a little while. All right, guys, so I picked up all the tools that I was using for mounting the unit. Now we're gonna move to running the lines. You see, I got the lines coiled up right here because that's where I tied them down when we were gonna go to Myrtle. Um, I didn't wanna leave them just loose, so I just kinda coiled them up and I zip tied them down to the solar panels so they didn't flop around while we were driving. But uh, now I've got time, so we're gonna route it. We're gonna hook up those, and then I'll probably go and hook up the wiring as well. And then the installation, well, no, I still gotta run the power supply to it. And then the installation should be done. Hi right, guys, so I've got my line set, run all the way down now, and turned in, connected and tight. So now I've got the electrical box opened up. I've still got to run the communication wires that go from the inside unit up into here. And I've got my hole marked here to put the combiner box. I got the Romax and the casing to connect the machine to the combiner box. So I installed the fittings into the cover that goes on the side of the AC unit itself. I got to fish the, the wires and the casing through here. And, uh, and then I can make all my connections. And when it's done, I can screw this back on and then make my connection down here. Well, we ran into a couple more complications. So as you can see here, I'm running the wires through the little cover, through my grommets, and I'm making my connections. As far as the, the 120 volt side coming in, it's pretty, pretty simple. You, you got a hot, you got a neutral, you got a ground. They're clearly marked. Where it gets a little complicated is the communication cable that goes from this unit to the inside unit. There are four wires in it. I've got a green wire, a red wire, a black wire, and a white wire. 
the green is obviously ground, but when you look at the uh, wiring guide that's on the inside of the cover, it gives you different color wires. Well, I also refer to the instruction manual, and in there it tells you which wires to wire to which terminal, but they're different colored wires than what this says. So the book gives me listings for one color, the cover plate gives me listings for another color, and my actual wiring is a completely different color. Um, and then what makes it even more confusing is like I said, I do have a black wire in here and all or both of the instructions, the one that's in the cover and the one that's in the book, both have a black wire, but the book shows it being in a different position than the cover shows it to be in. So which one do I put where? All right, guys, well, I looked at it again, and I was wrong. So in the manual and on the cover, it both gives me a black wire, a blue wire, and a brown wire, and they both go to the same places. But again, I have a black wire, a white wire, and a red wire in my um, communication cable. So the black is black, so I just left it black like it was supposed to be. Black goes to black. That's simple. And then the blue wire is the neutral that goes up to the uh, inside unit, and the brown wire is the hot wire. So I went ahead and used the white as the neutral that connects to the blue here because in my mind, white is neutral in most house electric, even though I did the black is green, whatever. Um, and then the red is the hot because I think positive. The truth is the wire colors don't even matter. I'm gonna take a picture of this before I button it all back up. That way when I go to wire the inside, as long as everything is in the right place, the color of the wire really makes no difference because they're not gonna match to the two units anyways. But as long as the right wire from here is connected to the right position there, the color is regardless. All right, guys, that is it. Everything is done. Combiner box is in and sealed. Get the lead going to the unit. Everything else is tied up nice and neat. So now I am going to clean up all of my tools. And then I'm gonna come back up. Here. Yeah, once I get the tools cleaned up, I'm gonna come back up with a couple shop towels and some brake clean and just try to wipe the mess down. As you can see, I've got the sealant all over me. It was so hard not to get in it. You know, when Derek was here last night, he stepped in it. This morning when I started working on it, I stepped in it. Michaela came by to visit for a little while, brought me a Slim Jim, she stepped in it. And then, you know, trying to get the wiring and all that was right there on that plate. You know, it's, it's just tacky enough still that the cord's laid in it, then I grab the cord all over my hands. Just an absolute mess. You know, realistically, if it wasn't for the storm coming in, you know, I could have just let this stuff set up um, and finish this project later on, but I really didn't want to let it sit for this whole weekend where the storm came because it would put me way behind schedule. So yeah, the right thing to do would have been to wait until this stuff completely dried, but I worked with a lot of sealant today too. I mean, every screw hole I put in this roof, I had to seal. So. No matter what, I guess it's kind of inevitable, but I think I can get it cleaned up and make it not look so bad. I'll see you guys on wiring the inside units where it gets wonky. So I did my red, white, and black on one, two, and three. And then of course the green goes to ground. But when you look at the instructions here, it tells you that you've got a gray, a black, and a brown. Now on the other side, brown, I went to red. But remember, I didn't have a gray wire at the outdoor unit. And where the gray wire is going here is where the black wire went on the outdoor unit. But here it says to put the black wire on number two. So which is right? Which is wrong? Do I go in numerical order or do I go in color order, which I changed the colors? Well, no, I kept black to black out there, but there is no black in here. Things that make you go, hmm. All right, guys, it is done. I say done, it's physically installed, it's physically wired, I believe to be right, but I'm gonna have somebody verify and double check that before we do the startup. Um, I did not turn on the breaker to test anything because we don't have the uh, startup stuff ready to go, but all of the connections are made. It's just a matter of turning on the breaker and doing the vacuum, 
and releasing the um, the refrigerant into the system. You know, I say done. I've got the drain lines, and that one drain line is still hanging all the way down to the ground off the roof. So yeah, I just got to trim that a little bit shorter, secure it to the roof tomorrow maybe. Um, the drain line coming out of the back of Goliath. Now you see that one up there? Oop, right there. It's still pretty long. I'm going to trim it, and I've actually got a, uh, a cast iron assembly that I'm going to build, and then I'm going to either paint it or powder coat it. It'll go on there, and, and it's going to act kind of like a gargoyle just so that you don't see the little white hose sticking out there. It'll give it kind of an industrial feel, um, but it makes sure it's got that downward slope and everything drips down and again, away from the truck so the water doesn't run down the painted surfaces. But guys, I think that's gonna be it for part two. These other little things, I mean, maybe I'll throw them in another video or something, but they're definitely not project worthy by themselves. So again, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This really shouldn't have been this hard. I've been out here four days working on this project and uh, it really, really shouldn't have been but a day, maybe a day and a half. Now, if you were doing this in a home, it would have been so much easier. One, you're not up on the roof most likely. You wouldn't have to necessarily cut out cabinets and redesign cabinets and drill holes through roofs. You know, typically these things mount on a wall, you go straight through the wall behind the unit and straight down to the uh, outside unit. And it's really, really simple, depending on where your power supply is coming from and what's available. Luckily, my power supply was the easy part because it was already there for that AC unit. It was just everything else making it work in an RV that wasn't designed for something like this. It was a little challenging, but thanks for watching, guys. And until the next time I see you, keep those engines running. Hi, right, guys. Just thought I'd show you. I mentioned the little gargoyle thingy hanging off of the back of the truck. Well, this is what I made. It's one inch galvanized pipe, flange, a close nipple, and a 45. And this will bolt right to the back of Goliath. I've already pre-drilled the holes. You can see up there where the, uh, where the drain line is. We don't want to see that sticking out. So this will bolt on, the drain line will come through it. It'll keep that little 45 pitch coming out the bottom. And uh, I don't know, give a little industrial feel, look better than before. So got it all put together and thread sealed. So now I'm just gonna go paint it black and then uh, we'll put some sealant on the back as we bolt it on and that'll stop any water or bugs and everything from crawling into that hole.